Today we do our best job to lock out the opponents with a deck by the amazing MTG Malone. Let's see how it goes. What is going on everybody and welcome to our very last Kamigawa standard deck for the season. That's right, uh, we got a new set coming out this Thursday guys and I am very excited for it. We're going to do our best to try and get some content up for you as quickly as we can. We'll try and stick to every day. We may even jump to twice a day uh, just for a few days over the weekend or something like that if we can get videos recorded. So I'm going to do the best I can but do expect that very very soon. Uh, in fact we've already kind of uh build a few decks thanks to some awesome members of the community which we'll talk about as we go through but uh for the last deck i wanted to do something uh that i thought was really actually just extraordinarily good uh and this was mtg malone's deck i actually watched this and thought holy crap that deck looks amazing it's his esper lockout deck so first and foremost thank you to mtg malone go check out his channel go hang out with them absolute blast uh this deck is mean <laughs> uh which is why i really like it so uh it's at heart obviously a bit more of a control deck than anything else uh we've got a lot of sweepers in the way of meat hook massacre uh we've got three doom scar here we've even got a single farewell uh all of which are going to help us to kind of control the board now we've got other ways to do that we've got fading hope Infernal Grasp, Vanishing Verse is in here. Uh, we can be preemptive with a Solid Coming or a Jwari Disruption. Uh, the Archon is a very interesting one, but one that, I, weirdly, like, I just don't see that often. I think it works great as a sideboard card, but I generally don't see it mainboard. Uh, but I, in practice, it does actually hit a decent amount. So it's a 2-3 flyer for 3 fine whatever but each player can't cast more than one spell each turn now because we're playing a lot on our opponent's turn we can really capitalize on that and not every other deck gets that opportunity uh, so we essentially can double up on things where they may not be able to now in addition to that non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped that's going to slow them down a little bit uh, there are a lot of pathway lands things like that that are technically non-basic that are going to come into play tapped if you can get this down early just helps to slow things down the Celestis is going to help ramp us a little bit as well as get that looting ability going so we can hopefully dig further into the deck. We do in the four drop slot have two powerhouse cards, the Wandering Emperor, of course, just a phenomenal card. Uh, Memory Deluge as well, of course, is just really, really good. We do have Lolth in the five drop slot as our big uh, scary planeswalker. And then in the seven drop slot, we've got Hullbreaker Horror. Uh, absolute crazy card for control decks and then Jenga Taxis. Now both of these are very hard to deal with threats in general uh, and certainly cards that we're happy to get down onto the field. Uh, as far as the lands go we do have you know a couple of Field of Ruin as well as a couple of man lands but nothing else too crazy. This is very focused on locking things down for the opponents. So we're going to run through this. We're going to have some fun with this. Before we jump into this, I do want to remind you, Streets of New Capenna, like I said, is coming out very soon. Uh, technically, pre-release is already there and all that stuff, but we will have our giveaway ending on May 4th. So if you are not already subscribed, you're going to want to. That is one way to enter. There are four free ways to enter. Details are on our landing page here on YouTube. Additionally, uh, Country Fried and I did start a podcast on Monday, and we were talking about Streets of New Capenna, some of our top picks and things like that. So please, dude, go check that out. Support the Glorious Sunrise podcast. That is a fun, fun project. Really hope you guys enjoy that. But let's jump right in. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I mean, we can keep this. It's a little like the Hullbreaker Horror isn't very good. Ugh, hair in my mouth but everything else is actually okay so we'll see uh we can leave up that fading hope for the first couple turns which i think will certainly be helpful and then naturally we've got other options later on so let's go ahead and foretell a solid coming do really love having this foretold just so if anything happens we've got the option you know what i mean like it it's uh it's a pretty useful little card uh let's go ahead I'm going to play the Deserted Beach. Now, what this opens up for us is either Solid Coming plus Fading Hope or just the Solid Coming in hand. Thankfully, we didn't need to really do either. Uh, we can just kind of let things ride. The opponent not really doing too much. Looks like a Jeskai deck could be another control deck, uh, which is certainly 
potentially challenging. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and counter with the one in hand. They're not gonna be able to play anything else off the top of the deck. And now they still have to wonder what this card is. So I think that's probably safer. Really love the memory deluge pickup. This opens up some opportunities for us. So I'm all too happy to have this one in hand. We're getting closer to that Hullbreaker Horror. That's not a card that they're gonna be able to easily deal with at the very least. Uh, the question is, do we counter this? Uh, I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna see what happens here. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and memory deluge. We can deal with this later on. This isn't something that I have to worry about right now. Uh, interesting. So I think it's definitely memory deluge and probably farewell just as ways to deal with basically anything. Uh, and there's a doom scar actually. That's very good. So let's go ahead and play blue. This opens up double blue spells plus the the single fading hope which is i think very crucial um and i think i'll just foretell this it's gonna be easy we don't need to do that crucially like we could have just played it out and left up fading hope but i think this is actually okay um we are again just setting up for that control piece where we can kind of sweep for a turn not really worry about what they're doing and basically be in the clear uh, we've got all the answers in hand at this point, so uh, let's go ahead and saw it coming on this. Hinata is not a card we want to hit uh, or want to to let hit the battlefield because then they can do like magma opus stuff and ridiculous things that we do not want to happen. Um, I don't even think we want to fading hope this. I think we can just you know burn it out or uh, excuse me sweep it out. Um, Hmm. I wish we could play this and play another spell, but we can't. Uh, but I think we can go ahead and play this out. This is a, a big scary spell. They can't counter it. They do have blue mana, so they could have like a bounce spell or, you know, something random that they could do to this. Uh, but crucially, if they do, you know, again, we've got all the answers in the world at this point, and we've even got m ways to find more uh, game ending kind of cards. So at this point, we're, I think, in the uh, in the driver's seat, despite not having dealt either. Either of us have not dealt damage, <laughs> uh, but that's OK. Uh, but we've got double, I mean, memory deluge on four and seven essentially so we can either go for the four mana and then leave up other things or go for you know whatever we need to and they're not going to have permanent ways to deal with this i don't think um <laughs> infernal grasp huh uh so i'm gonna be proactive here just in case they have something i'm gonna i'm gonna try and do this first uh, if they have a weird counter or something like that, I'm curious, but it looks like they don't. And now here, we just get to Memory Deluge at the uh, the end step of their turn. They really don't have much. Like, <laughs> they really don't have much. Uh, three cards certainly could be something, but they haven't been playing a lot of threats, and so I'm not really all that worried about it. Worth noting as well, we do just have Hall of the Storm Giants, so like at some point we can just do that. Sure. So let's go ahead and Memory Deluge. Um, hmm. Vanishing Verse, probably not going to be that good against this uh, deck, just because it is a Hinata deck, but we also just have Doom Scar and plenty of other things that we can do here, so it's really not that important that we have it. Uh, let's throw this down. Uh, yeah, so... I really don't want to... Like, part of me wants to do it, part of me doesn't, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so we could just fading hope it and it's just gone anyway. I guess we'll do this and I suppose we'll fading hope just because, um, thing is it fizzles the fading hope. So it's really not all that helpful. <laughs> uh, it'd be great if there was another thing like that we could hit, but we can't. Uh, so, all right, cool. Well, they did refill their hand though, which is worth noting. I mean, that's a... A scary prospect in a deck that does have a lot of mana and it does have things like magma opus that could come down and deal quite a bit of damage 
we do need to start closing out this game. Uh, we've done a great job of handling everything so far, but I do think, you know, between Hall of the Storm Giants and a Hall Breaker Horror, yeah, there we go. Um, we do need to find a way to kind of deal with stuff uh, whenever you cast a spell. All right. Um, so let's see if we play this for two, one, two, three, four, five, this needs six. So then we could just play this for two. That allows us to bounce their Hallbreaker Horror. Uh, yeah, that doesn't do anything. And then we get to activate this. Oh no, excuse me. Did I miscount? I played this for two. Why did I play that for two? I meant to play it for zero. <laughs> that was really dumb. Uh, that was a oops. Um, that's okay. So they do have a Hullbreaker Horror though. That's pretty scary. Why didn't they also choose? That's weird. All right, cool. Um, let's do this. Let's start getting some damage in. Thankfully, this is a race we very easily win, so that's not really a problem. Um, and we do have plenty of ways to deal with their horror. We've got Farewell, we've got Doomscar, we've got tons of stuff, so not super worried about it. Nice. Just doesn't really matter. If they have a, like, instant speed spell, they can... I mean, they can kind of do something here, but we've got double up, so it doesn't really matter. Yep. So now they have two mana available. Okay. I'm just gonna Doomscar again. <laughs> uh, the beauty of this deck, man, it has... So again, MTG Malone was very careful, and you can tell just by looking at the deck, just how, like how crucial it was that there were multiple instances of you know exile effects or sweeper effects or whatever uh and so what we're able to do is kind of double up on spells pretty easily um but it's it feels like it's happening at the right time like it doesn't feel um it doesn't feel like there are just too many things crammed into one deck which is really really important uh this isn't that important Spells can't be countered, so Negate does nothing. Farewell doesn't really do anything. Magma Opus is very good, but they can't play it. And then this... I mean... <laughs> they can draw some cards, uh, which is good, I suppose. But they can't counter anything, so they really shut stuff down for themselves here. <laughs> These are going to be longer games, by the way, guys. So just as a heads up, we may not get to three full games, but regardless... I, in practice, I kind of knew this deck was going to be sick just because of how how well it could handle so many different situations. So um, I'm kind of just stoked to be playing this one. Uh, yeah. I don't really want to exile all graveyards, though, do I? Hold on. Because we can just haul the Storm Giants, can't we? I'm just gonna do this. They can't really do anything to this because the ward cost is more mana than they have. <laughs> um, I guess I'll do this. So at the very least, this will get some stuff out of their graveyard too. And this is a lethal attack worth, worth noting. We'll just take the Magma Opus out so they've got not that to play. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, Yep. Cool. I mean, this is like a pretty straightforward game at this point. They have Hall of the Storm Giants, so they can get an attack in, but that's about all they can do. Um, and so we're just getting them to the point where they really don't have very much. Uh, slowly locking them down. Cool. So they get a 4-4. They draw some cards. They've got three mana left only one blue which is i think pretty relevant because a lot of standard cards right now require a, a lot of good standard cards require two blue but they're gonna expressive iteration really did they have more than one blue 
They totally did. That was my fault. Okay. This is a situation where that Archon would be pretty good just because it would shut down a lot of what they're doing. Um, again, they have two mana left available. What? No. Not what I meant to hit. Uh, let's do this. We should have farewelled first. That would have won us the game, but it's fine. I'm being methodical. I'm going to blame it on that, but it's not that. <laughs> uh, I think we just take Leer just in case. Like, I don't know what they could have, but Leer is probably the scariest thing. Cool. And again, we're gaining life off of this Mi Hook, and so we're kind of keeping out of range of a lot of stuff. Ghostman Dragon's really good. We're dumb, though. We could have just farewelled an attack and... And they could have had negate, I suppose. That might have been the only thing. Um, but I'm not super worried about that. So farewell is really good here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do those two. They could counter this and that's okay not great awesome um yeah I suppose we do this for the ward cost so this is the safer bet because uh the ward cost is something that they have to consider when they go to try and remove this so if they happen to have a spell that can remove it they also then have to pay an extra three um so if it's like a fading hope and they just bounce it, like technically that works. But if it's a, uh, I don't know, some three mana thing. Oh, nice. So they win, actually. Well, I'm a little upset because they now just attack with Hall of the Storm Giants. The trick is, do they remember? Yes. Well done. That's really unfortunate. I did not expect Lorehold Command. I'm really upset by that. Oh no! <laughs> okay, fair enough. But hey, they got us. No, no, no harm, no foul. They got us on that one. That kind of sucks. Let's move on to game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, let's see if we can do a little better this time. That felt really bad to lose to a... Uh, this is a bad keep, but I did. Um, that felt really bad to lose to a, uh, a lore hold command of all cards. But hey, they got us. I mean, I can't be upset about it. They, they played very, very well and very cleverly in the way that they did that. So that was just smart. Uh, we'll go ahead, foretell the saw it coming. Uh, next turn, obviously gonna play a land probably pass i think it'll most likely be that shattered sanctum that gives us double white it starts us in on the black side of things as well which is good and we'll certainly need it to deal with some of this stuff uh zimone huh i haven't actually seen her played like in a long time so this is gonna be interesting uh they're gonna put a land cool uh meetup massacre should be pretty relevant here we're just able to kind of sweep um yeah, it's going to be really good. All right. Cool. Ooh, Archon's not bad, actually. Um, but we are just going to sweep for two here. Get rid of everything. And what we're doing is setting up for next turn. We've just got Loth that can come down minus uh, three and get a couple of creatures on the field. And then we should be in okay shape to kind of deal with whatever. Looks like... Okay. The Cultivator is pretty good, but... Um, not gonna like beat us right away i'm sure they're ramping into something really good though so okay cool. so one thing we could consider is archon pass uh to leave up solid coming we could also foretell and then archon or we could just lull um i kind of like the idea of trying the archon 
Um, this leaves up the saw it coming play, which will counter whatever their one play for the turn is. That's kind of where this little piece gets really good, is that you just get to counter the only spell they can cast for the turn, and then you're in, like, really good shape. <laughs> Uh, and we've got a lot of things that do a lot more, so yeah. So that's really good, actually. Um, so now they can't do anything else. Uh, they can attack, but that's fine. I don't particularly care about three damage at this point in the game. So we're going to lull. We're going to minus three. Uh, and I will attack. We do need to to get the attacks going here and depending on what they play we may end up blocking with the two ones just to to get the cultivator off the field um worst case scenario though we've got doomscar that can sweep the board get us into a better position just one more land also gives us the horror so that's pretty good they just didn't attack <laughs> interesting uh all right let's draw a card Okay, it's a tapped land, but it's a land. Uh, we'll foretell that. Foretell that. Just get things kind of where they need to be. Uh, and attack for two. If they have something great, if they don't, also great. <laughs> and again, we've got the saw it coming play. So they do have a layer of the Hydra, which is something we need to consider. Um, oh. Dang it. We can't counter that. Uh, Alright, that's fine. They can still only play one spell per turn. Uh, and we do get to counter their spell. They have Broken Wings as a main board card in their deck. That's not good. <laughs> that's really not. So as of right now, they still can only play one spell this turn. And they played it. Uh, and they chose for what to, to bounce one of the uh, tokens. So, <laughs> sure. No. It just doesn't matter, right? So we just let Loth die. That was a weird sequence of events. Um, but fine by me. Okay, uh, so the move is to first attack and then we just Doomscar. We're basically just hoping they don't have a counter, which is not unlikely, but I don't think super likely either. And this also leaves up memory deluge. Oh, they're just going to bounce this. So they can just bounce their board back, basically. Okay. Yeah. Hey, good call. Into the Royal is pretty solid. We basically destroyed our own board. Uh, yeah, fair enough. So that's okay, not great. We do have the memory deluge play, so we'll um, most likely just end up throwing that back out. If they just play the Hullbreaker Horror, they probably don't have a lot else. So the hope is that we can kind of get out from under that, uh, especially if we do draw a sweeper of some kind. Um, but we'll see. We do have a Hullbreaker Breaker Horror of our own. Uh, so at some point we can kind of drop that down. I'm not gonna play anything let's try for the memory deluge um they have one unknown card in their hand so we want this probably just want to land as unexciting as that is <laughs> uh yeah so now what that one unknown is a little scary um Hmm. Kind of just want to do this. What's in their graveyard that we... Not a lot. The Broken Wings play is so weird to me. Um, yeah, weirdly, I think we just pass. I'm not sold on this, but like... Yeah, so Hallbreaker Horror does have class, which is part of why I did this. Um, no, okay. 
So now, like, they're going to get a good solid attack in with the whole Breaker Horror. We could flash our own out in response to the incoming attack if we think they don't have anything uh, at instant speed. But I'm kind of thinking they do. And really, all that does is give them a target. So <laughs> I think it's more likely that we Memory Deluge and just take seven. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now I assume they start playing some stuff out. Yep. So they can bounce the meat hook, but they choose not to. Cool. Also, I'm realizing in the previous play that we had, um... no, you have to choose one. Okay. I was going to say, never mind. Uh, let's just memory deluge. Let's be, let's be simple. We're, we're in refill mode here. Uh, at this point. So, Vanishing versus okay. Look at all of these. <laughs> I actually really do like having the Field of Ruin against the uh, the potential layer of the Hydra. All right. Uh... <laughs> Interesting. I'm gonna, I don't know if this is correct. I have no idea. We're really showing our hand here by doing this now. I'm gonna try. Let's just see what happens. If they've got it, they've got it, but... Okay, cool. They did not. Alright, well that was risky. That was super risky. Uh, but... It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> they can just attack with a massive layer of the Hydra, which would suck. <laughs> Um, that Field of Ruin's gonna be really handy at some point here, though. Yeah, they're gonna do it, I think. Um, which is fine. X equals eight. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think we block, though, because we just win next turn, so we attack with Hallbreaker Horror and this guy. Sick. We did it. I'm getting the broken wings out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was a weird game. Uh, super odd deck too. I really like the Simic decks, uh, but that one was a little odd. Anyway, guys, we are up on time, so let's go ahead. Let's talk about this for just a second uh, and, and see what we think here. All right. So uh, first and foremost, again, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to MTG Malone. This deck list, I think, is really, really good. I think we misplayed in game one for sure. I think um, there had to have been a way we could have gotten out from under that and we just chose not to. So that that I think was on us, uh, not the deck. We had all the answers in the world. So I'm just assuming we probably misplayed. Uh, didn't know they would have Lorehold Command, uh, but that is a deck that does traditionally run it. I just didn't think about it so that's on me um but regardless mtg malone thank you so much for putting this awesome list together this is a fun one it is a huge huge pain in the butt for the opponent uh it just has answers for everything it's got ways to find those answers and it's got big scary things we didn't get to see a jenga taxis hit the field which is probably my favorite card in the deck um but regardless, this is this is a blast. This is such a good deck. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Esper just gets better with the uh, new set coming out. Obviously, there's a lot of Esper support. A lot of different decks are going to be coming out very quickly here, guys. So uh, do stay tuned for the channel. I'm going to still probably do a uh, flex day tomorrow. And what that means is I'm still probably going to have like a modern or a popper. I think it might be popper again uh, tomorrow. Popper video tomorrow for slivers. Um, but do keep in mind later on in the day, we'll probably start getting out some standard videos. So I'm going to try and kind of stock up on those as quickly as I can and get those out to you guys. So we'll do the best we can there. A lot of them are going to be like early versions of decks. We're not necessarily going to have like a perfect, uh, uh, fleshed out, teched out version of a deck. But we are going to have some fun with it. And I cannot wait for the new set, guys. Hope you guys are excited. Do enter the giveaway. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you later.